This panel celebrates the winners of the International Youth Work Workshop Research for Change, Gender, Force, Migration, and Vulnerabilities, organized in April 2021. So congratulations to the winner, and I move the words to Lisa. Okay, thank you very much, Giovanni. Buongiorno. Hello, everybody. The lunch is always getting closer, so we are going to be very brief in our presentations. So, as the very first uh, activity of the RISE Observatory for Forced Displacement, last year our communication volunteers organized the, this conference called Research for Change. Gender, Forced Migration and Vulnerabilities. It was held in the month of April and it brought together people mainly from Europe, but also many people from Middle East uh, and other um, Asian countries as well as from America and Africa as well. Altogether we received a huge amount of abstract, but uh, 35 papers were finally presented in six thematic sessions. And the focus one was on very practical proposals that could help to understand and transform realities in the intersection study of forced migration, gender inequalities, and uh, other kinds of vulnerabilities. And as Giovanni already mentioned, we wanted to give the floor to young uh, people. So uh, the, the focus was on undergraduates in their last years of study, but mainly also on master degree and PhD students. So we have the luck of having the three winning proposals here today with us. So let's welcome Naima from Jordan, Nancy from Denmark, Manuela from Switzerland, and Aline all over from Brazil. And uh, our first speaker will be Naim Al-Hasban. She's uh, an associate professor at the Arab Open University in Jordan, where she is largely engaged in working with refugees. She has experience in this field as she has been working as a volunteer in a European-funded project titled HOPES that helped several young female uh, refugees to study at university. Also, she is the focal point at an international project about education in emergencies led by Geneva University. She has several publications in the field of education in emergencies. <coughs> and uh, nowadays, she's particularly interested in developing further research about the reasons for school-age female refugees drop out and also about the professional development of a lecturers who teach refugees. She is now presenting a paper called Young Female Refugees Education from Policies to Pedagogical Practices. Thank you, Professor Lisa. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Lisa, and thank you for the uh, organizer for this exceptional chance to present uh, the idea of my research project. Um, uh, first of all, the idea that came two years ago when I trained some uh, Syrian uh, teacher uh, and Jordanian teachers of refugees, and they told me that all of what we've done, that it's useless because um, uh, female students will leave early and they will get married or they will, uh, will not be able to continue their studies. This idea that make me to ask these teachers to just ask students, especially females, about their dreams and the challenges of um, uh, obstructing their dreams. And I, they provided me with these uh, drawing. So what I understand from these drawing that no, female students, they want to start reading and writing and they want to continue their higher education. But 
there are many challenges. That's some of the challenges that they are facing, uh, traumatized conditions. Uh, it could be the community that they, they forced some of the challenges. So I tried to um, understand what are the challenges, especially that in terms of policies, that we have many responsive plans that Jordan authorities that um, formulated uh, for responsive plans in order to provide uh, equity education for refugees. Um, so I started with these four uh, research questions. Um, that I want to understand the national response plans, what are the ideas embedded in these response plans, um, then uh, the statistic, the numbers of students that registered uh, at the Ministry of Education, uh, especially related to refugees uh, students. Uh, also, in order to understand thoroughly the, uh, the situation that I listened to specialists in education in emergencies in Jordan, um, uh, also uh, to some teachers, we have teacher, Jordanian teachers and Syrian uh, teachers. Uh, I tried to listen to the parents and the students themselves, but it was really difficult. Um, I used um, this methodology that's a content analysis of the response plans that from um, uh, 2013 until uh, the last uh, response plans from 2018 until 22. And I uh, tried to collect uh, data from uh, the uh, specialists and teachers. So I conducted uh, 15 interviews. Um, finding that uh, the analysis of the response, the four response plans um, from 2013 until uh, the last uh, response plans 18-22, that I found that everything what we want are embedded in these response plans, that we focused on the humanitarian and resilience intervention at the beginning in order to absorb those students in the, uh, at schools and in the education system. Then they learned many lessons, so they focused, at in the, uh, especially in the last two response plans, in a more development-oriented intervention in order to focus on access, equality, um, in including uh, special needs students, uh, females. So all the, the bright points that we wanted are existed in the uh, response plans. So what is the problem? That I tried to understand more, even the policies, the, the uh, theories told us this is the perfect way of uh, providing education to refugees. Okay, I uh, collected a uh, statistic in order also to understand in the field what is the problem. Um, so I brought statistics from the Ministry of Education from 2000, 2017 until 2021, uh, and I tried to read these statistics that if you notice, we have some unsystematic presentation of the numbers. Um, but all in all, if you notice that males access is more than females. This is, it could be the, more, the most prominent uh, view that you can see. But the, what I noticed also that if you can see and uh, focus that the number of females is decreasing over grades. For example, if you notice in uh, 2017, females 1,225 and in grade 12 at the end of the secondary uh, stage, they just 807. So it could be this is um, an indicator of how uh, females are dropping out uh, during grades, especially when they get older. 
Um, also, I uh, tried to find the dropout uh, rate of uh, females, and again, I found the same uh, result, that the number of dropout uh, among females is more than uh, males, especially if you notice when they get older, so when they are at the age of marriage. It isn't a, an age of marriage, but from the point of view of the society, it is. Um, so um, that's, this uh, told me that there is really a problem among females more than males. Um, okay, here we have two kinds of education in Jordan. We have formal education uh, and we have uh, non-formal education. This is for uh, students who dropped out. So they try to make them to come back and to continue their studies, especially the third program, the catch-up program. And if you notice, this is the least number of students, female students, uh, if you notice, but the other, the, um, the females are more than males. Also, this told me that females, they want to study. Not what, uh, what people say that they didn't. Females, they want. And I want just to uh, refer to what um, my colleague Suad said, that f females, just they need to upskill and to raise their awareness and to empower them. And education is, it could be the only way of empowering uh, females. Um, uh, then uh, I uh, listened to some uh, Jordanian teachers. Uh, they have experience in teaching at least three years. Um, and I found that why uh, females drop out and leave schools, um, especially after the end of the primary uh, stage, that they told me that it could be family culture um, because they, they didn't want their uh, females, especially in Jordan, that uh, Syrian students in the host community, they are sent to evening class. And so they are afraid of for their uh, um, uh, girls. Um, and some, um, it could be re related to some aspect of violence and bullying in both camps or uh, the host community. And um, another um, important point that, okay, uh, girls finished their secondary stage. Um, the Jordanian authorities couldn't provide higher education opportunities for all the graduates from the secondary. So most of them depend on scholarship and they, it is, they have some difficult conditions. So girls who finish, okay, uh, they think, if, if I finished secondary stage, what, what's next? So if their families didn't support them, okay, you will get a scholarship. This will make them disappointed. Um, and it could be the, um, the teaching or the instruction atmosphere. We have a poor physical and emotional environment. This is due to, the, this is my explanation that teachers, they are alternative teachers. Uh, they um, deal with Syrian students as they deal with students in the host community. And it, it isn't true because students and uh, refugees, they face difficult situation and uh, traumatized conditions. So we couldn't teach them like normal students. And the difficult curriculum, one of the teachers told me that I taught students the same curriculum of the Jordanian students. I present, for example, in English language, a whole paragraph, while students, they couldn't, they, they didn't know even the alphabets. So how could they understand a whole paragraph? Um, uh, also, the uh, poor level of students in the main uh, subjects, math, science, English uh, language. Um, the Syrian teachers, they told me that uh, education isn't in that equality because uh, I, um, um, and even their parents, they aren't qualified or satisfied with this, so they didn't send them because they feel they, they, get in, they didn't get the benefit that they expected. Um, uh, also teachers, teachers, I ask them how many, uh, okay, uh, I will try to finish. Uh, how many um, uh, traumatized cases do you face? They said nothing. But in reality, there are many. 
um, specialists that, that the learning time, that when the period of uh, teaching, it is 20, uh, 35 minutes, they, they couldn't deal with all uh, of the conditions and the uh, learning differences. Um, families, they devalue education, uh, limited opportunities of enrolling in higher education. The last minute, I will go to uh, what I understand from the whole um, uh, data that I collected that it is difficult to solve all of these problems, but uh, it isn't impossible. So we have hope uh, to review the current policies in order to be down to the earth because the policies, they are uh, in the sky. Um, even a teacher selection, it should be in a different way. They should be, they know how to deal with a traumatized student, not just teaching. Um, access and equality, not aims, but the outcomes. Because I can take, you know, the English proverb, we can take the horse to the river, but we couldn't for us it to drink. This is what is happening in, uh, at schools of refugees. Um, entrepreneurship, technical and vocational tracks should be that uh, in Jordan we have uh, a high rate of uh, unemployment. So those uh, uh, females, we could help them to, uh, to uh, enroll in these tracks uh, rather than just having uh, a higher education um, a degree. Okay, thank you.